I'm so glad you're here today. Jesus is coming, and he's preparing us for his return by giving us revelation knowledge. It's so apparent after listening to him. We think we got it together. We think we got it all figured out, and we're not even close. So let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We thank you and praise you for showing us things to come. We thank you that you're showing us that we're not right with you, and we thank you that you are willing and that you are just like going way out of your way to tell us that it's not your will that one should perish and we don't got it right. We got to get it together and you're going to be here soon. We love you and praise you. Give you all the glory. He is. He's so good. And wow, I mean, there's so much we don't know. When I started this, I don't know how many years ago, I didn't know what I know today. I am learning as much as you are if you're here and you're listening. We are not ready. Today he was talking about when he said to pray. Well, I was reading a little before this, and and he was saying pretty much how we don't got it together. Um, when he was saying how, um, like in verse seven, when you pray, don't heap up phrases, multiple words, repeating the same things over and over as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Don't be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. But pray like this, our father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. So he's like, let's get down to business here. That's enough of this thing that we think that is right. But this is a way to do it. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. Our father who is in heaven, hallow, keep holy your name. And so what he's really saying is, is this is what should be happening. This is what we should be asking. Help us to keep your name holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what he was talking to me about this morning. We, we think we're going to heaven, but lots of people I hear him say, I don't know God's will. They think they're going to heaven. They don't know his will. And some aren't in agreement with his will. So his will is his word. The word of God is his will. It's what he thinks. It's his opinion. It's his way of doing. And if we want to move in with him, we have to ask to be a part of his will coming to pass in our lives and on the earth. And so what you really have to do is submit. Say, God, not my will, but your will. I'm going to do it your way. I'm not going to do it my way. What I think doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think matters. I exalt you. I honor you. Your will be done, not mine. Our will, if if our will were to be done, it would be a lot messier than it is. And actually, we are doing our own will, and that's why we are in such a mess. So in this instance, he's saying, ask, ask, help us to do your will on the earth as it is in heaven. That's what he wants. That's his will. That's what he wants to happen. And so if you are constantly seeking his will and changing your life to come in agreement with him, you're a part of making heaven on the earth. And that's what he's saying he wants to happen. It's his will that we live in heaven on the earth. Isn't that exciting? It is. It's really, really exciting that we have the privilege that our assignment is to learn how to live in heaven right here, right now. And then we're going to fit right into that door. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And when you pray, don't heap up phrases, multiple words, repeating the same things over and over as the Gentiles do. They think they'll be hurt for their much speaking. When you go into your, verse 6, when you go into your most private room, closing the door, pray to the Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
There's so many things that are happening that is not his will. When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray and stain it, stain, uh, sorry, standing in synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by the people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward in full already. I know I'm reading backwards. But the point is, is we don't got it together. We don't know what we're doing. And Jesus came and corrected us. And we can see these same kind of prayers today. And it, it's like we're trying to impress people as well as impress God. And so pray like this. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Care about what he cares about. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And when you do, you're going to care about what he cares about. You're going to find out. You're going to seek him and find out what he cares about. What do, you, what do you want, Lord? What's happening? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? I honor you. I reverence you. I honor your name. I put you first. It's your way, not my way. I give you reference, Father. It's about you, not about me. And then, live in his will. If you don't know what it is, go to the word of God. He just told us how not to pray and how to pray. That's as well. And if we're just doing what we want to do or what we think, then we're not praying his will. And on that day, he, you know, you're going to be thinking, but, but Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He's going to say, I didn't know you. Away from me. You who practice lawlessness. His will is his law, his way to live, his way to be, his way to talk, his way to see. Him living on the inside of you is the only way you're going to be able to do his will. Your kingdom come, your will be done on, our, on earth as it is in heaven. So we should be seeking his will, his kingdom, how things are happening, how things are to be in the kingdom of heaven, and then doing them, practicing them. Coming into a whole different group of living separated from the religious people, the people that don't know. And when we do his will and we're bringing heaven on the earth, he's going to be pleased and we're going to be ready. And we're going to be doing his work. He's, we're going to be, you know, if we don't know his will, we just are... Like in the day of Noah, oblivious to what's going to happen, just roaming around, you know, taking up our space till Jesus comes and not knowing, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know why I'm here kind of thing. No, it's not to be like that. His will be done. We got a work to do to do his will, to make a place of heaven on the earth to make a change. If you're just one person, you can change things. You can. We can make a change by doing his will, practicing his will. Give us a stay, our daily bread. When we're doing his will, he's going to take care of us like he said. He knows what we need before we pray. It's not about that. We're not to be praying for what we need. He already knows what we need. But we're to be praying, asking him to help us to do his will on the earth. And if you don't know his will, find out. Open the book. Many who are, are oblivious to what's going to happen, it's only because they're too lazy to open the book. Now, don't let that offend you. Just open the book so you get to know him so you can have eternal life. It's not his will that even one should perish. He's grieving. He's long-suffering. He's waiting for us to do his will. We got to make it happen. He's given us power and authority 
on the earth. We have to take authority over the enemy. He's not our excuse not to get anything done. God's given us all the same. He's no respecter of person. We all have the same opportunity. You can do his will or you can complain about your circumstances. If you do his will, you'll be changing your circumstances by what you say. He said, talk to the mountain, talk to the problem, make it change. If you tell this mountain to move from here to there, nothing will be impossible for you if you believe. You know, we say we believe, we go through the motions and not doing it. And I think that many start out that way because you're dependent on a teacher. You're dependent upon that person behind the pulpit. And sometimes that person doesn't really know what's going on. They're just there because it's like a job and it's just the truth. And so I'm saying it. Jesus gave his life for you. His spirit, now his spirit, God's spirit is available to come and live on the inside of you and talk to you, to be there for you, to teach you, to guide you, tell you things to come. Jesus is coming, and if you are oblivious to that, if this is news to you and you're not getting ready, then um, you got to get ready. you got to hear his voice. If you don't know, you're not hearing him. This is an appointment that you want to miss. It's not. You want to know. If the bus is coming and you miss it, you're not going to have a ride. The earth is going to burn. And if you miss your way out, you missed it. There's an appointed time only the Father knows. And when he tells Jesus to open that door, Jesus is going to open the door and that time, at that time, your time is up. It's the end. And that is when we will all be judged, all of us. So your assignment is to live in God's will right here on the earth. And then you can depend on him to take care of you and you don't have to take care of yourself. Give us a stay, our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we've forgiven, left remitted and let it go and had given up resentment against others. It's your assignment to forgive, to love, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That's how we're to pray. Yet, we're begging God for things that are, have already been promised to us, but the reason we're not getting them is because we have just disregarded his commands, like Jesus said. And if things aren't working for you now, you've disregarded his commands, and that is an indication that on that day, that's what he's going to say to you. So you may be saying, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name and I did that in your name on that day. Try to argue with him and it's not going to get you anywhere. Now's the time. Get corrected. Get corrected. Revelation 3.19, he said that he corrects those that he loves. He corrects those he loves. Let him correct you. Get on your knees. Change me. Correct me. Tell me. What do I got to do? What is my sin? Only him, only he can tell you. You can be sinning every day and not realize it until he tells you. In the world, for example, if there, there's something that you don't know, then you walk oblivious to that. If you... Don't get on your knees every day and say, Lord, correct me. I want to be right with you. I want to enter into the kingdom of heaven with you. I want to do your will. Then he will show you. He's not holding back. 
But you got to get on your knees and be willing. Ask. Ask him. Ask him to correct you now before it's too late. Do his will now. Pray. Ask him to help you to, do, to live in heaven on the earth, to bring heaven right here on the earth. Be a part of his life. His kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So good to us. So don't be, don't be like the hypocrites, the heathen. But make sure on that day that Jesus isn't going to say, away from me. I don't know you. You who disregard my command. Don't disregard his commands. But do them. This is a command. To live in heaven on the earth. Are we doing that? No. Most people are just like waiting to get there. We're supposed to be there. We're supposed to be making it happen here. Never ask Jesus to come live on the inside of you. Revelation 3.20. He said, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And if you would heed my voice, I will come and live on the inside of you. I will dine with you. If you heed his voice. You don't say a prayer and think that's your ticket to get on that bus. And the bus is going to sit there and wait for you. It's not. He's not. He's waiting for you now. He's, he's, you're called the bride of Christ. He's the groom. He's waiting for you to get ready to marry him. And that doesn't happen by sitting on the couch, watching TV, arguing the gospel. No, we have to go do his work. We have to be a doer. A doer, not just a hearer. But a doer. So if you want to commit to him to do as well, if you want to bring heaven on the earth, then I'm going to pray with you right now. Let's do that. Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you've chosen us to do your work, to bring heaven on the earth. Thank you. Help us, help us to do it. Help us. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us. We're asking you to help us to do that. Teach us. Correct us. Guide us. You're so good to us. Thank you, Jesus. If you asked him to come live on the inside of you just now, or if you didn't, you can always ask him. I just... I just want to encourage you, look at the word every day. Listen for his voice. He sounds like his word. Let him teach you. Get on your knees. Honor him. Honor him. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Give him reverence. Make him number one in your life. Like, actually... Do it, not just say it, but do it. Don't be just a, a hearer of the word, but a doer. Thanks so much for listening today. God bless you.